Dale Miller, Trevor McAleer serving as an alternate for Dan Brady, Mike Chambers serving as an alternate for Mike Dever, Matt Carroll serving as an alternate for Armin Budish, Here. Lenora Lockett, Here. we have a quorum. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the minutes from May 13th. Should have those there. Any questions or uh, comments, corrections? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from May 13th. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. On time. Okay. Uh, and then we're ready for contracts and awards. Any table items? We have the first tabled item. I am going to amend the approval number. It's item number BC 2019-355. It's a two-part item, Department of Development A, submitting an RP exemption on RQ45327, which will result in a payment to Greater Cleveland Film Commission in the amount of $210,000 for operational support for the period May 20th, 2019 through May 19th, 2019. 2020 and B recommending the payment in connection with said RFP exemption. Um, good morning, Paul Hurdig here, and Director Ted Carter has just come in as well for the Department of Development. Um, this is a renewal of operating support that Cuyahoga County has provided for a number of years to the Greater Cleveland Film Commission. We normally do these on a fairly routine basis. The funds were, in fact, set aside in our budget for the year. We have, in fact, received and Ted has met with the leadership of the commission, is quite satisfied with their work, with their work plan. There's an additional element now because of some uncertainty that's been created by the state about the continuation of the state film credit, the production credit. And for that reason, both um, Armand and also a member of this board had some questions. And we felt it was important to let um, the leadership speak directly. So we have here today Ivan Schwartz, the President and CEO of the Greater Cleveland Film Commission, Trish Comco, the Treasurer of their board, and Seema Jaswell, a member of their staff. And with your permission, Matt, I'm going to allow Ivan to make a presentation. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Paul. Really welcome members of the organization to the group. Ivan, happy to hear from you or any, anyone else who's with you. Thank you. It's been a long time. Nice know, to see you. I know. Good to see you, too. So, um, uh, I understand that there's some apprehension uh, and probably justified given what some of the comments of the Speaker of the House has made. Um, uh, but we have every indication that um, uh, the Senate is going to be putting the incentive back in the bill and that it will be a priority for the Senate in caucus. So we do not anticipate any change to the program. If anything, um, we're still trying to grow it. So we're going to be uh, still advocating to raise it to $100 million. So we haven't lost any momentum or any, um, uh, nothing's been derailed or sidetracked on what our mission is. Uh, we probably have some questions. Yeah, go ahead. No, Trevor. Absolutely. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, just in term, if it, if the Senate wasn't su successful in putting that back in, just if it, everything stood the way it is now, uh, with the House version, what impact would it have on the Film Commission? Well, not only would it have an impact on the Film Commission, it would have an impact on the industry in Ohio. Um, uh, we've created 5,000 full-time equivalent jobs since the program started in 2009, um, which is the equivalent of losing Lordstown and DHL at the same time. Um, we've, we really haven't had any indication, so we really haven't spent a lot of time thinking about that what if, um, because we've gotten such positive uh, feedback from the, the Senate and, uh, and believe that they are, from all indications, going to make it a priority in the caucus. Other questions? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Trevor. Just as well, is that 5,000 full-time equivalent for uh, the Cuyahoga County, Cleveland area, or is that statewide? Uh, Cuyahoga County, Cleveland area is 3,400 full-time equivalent jobs, so the 5,000 is statewide. And, and I, I go ahead, Councilman. Yeah, question him. The budget needs to be approved by the end of June. Yes. So we're looking at this is the end of almost the end of May. Is there any um, urgency that we can wait just to get that confirmation from Senate? Well, the council feels uh, is important, but um, you know we're a small nonprofit, 
and every dollar counts. And you know, we spend a tremendous amount of time on advocacy and attraction, and we have not stopped. You know, we we're, our business is not on hold, so we're constantly advocating and and using these dollars to bring jobs to Northeast Ohio. Um, so I would urge you to not wait, but I definitely would understand. I, I had a question just generally, if you could, Ivan, about uh, sort of our um, people with whom we compete across the country, mm -hmm. uh, sort of the trends with jurisdictions making these kind of determinations. Just, just curious. I mean, they're obviously kind of really identified individual areas that we kind of compete for jobs with, you know, that need our look or a similar look. Just, just to, if you make a comment or two about that. Sure. I mean, we're not competing with anybody. I think Ohio is can sell itself. We've never had a problem getting anyone here. Um, uh, the biggest competitor is having the incentive itself, um, but that's in place. We have a very good incentive. People like coming here. Um, you know, we've not, uh, you know, we're growing like crazy, and that's why we want to raise the incentive, is that we're tired of turning people, the only reason we turn people away is because the incentive money is too low. Um, so there's a lot of interest in, in, especially in Cuyahoga County, we get about 70% of all production in the state of Ohio. Uh, to the councilwoman's point, I, to end to what you respond, your response, um, I assume that if there were to be a change, and I think you're, you're feeling like there won't be, but if there were, there's still things in the pipeline that you have to get done as an organization. Is that and you'll and they'll you know, assume there'll be some still some effort that needs to be made. Is that your is that part of your point? Absolutely. We've yeah. have money that's already been approved, and so we'll have movies still coming here. We have a movie scouting this week um, that that we'll be filming in in in, uh, uh, in, in Cleveland, and you know they they look to our office not change. So we we can discuss. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Sorry. Some clarity. Um, so if the Senate, we can always look at the worst case scenario, which I believe you're you're correct. I think that it will be passed. But given the worst case scenario, are you're still committed to the two hundred and ten thousand uh, for the Greater Cleveland Film Festival? Either way, Film yeah. Commission. Commission. So, yes, absolutely. But, okay. So either way, this 210 would be uh, spent the same way as it would have been spent with or without the Senate's. Absolutely. Yes. In this year's budget. Any other uh, questions that issue um, as far as uh, delay? But um, any, uh, I, I guess I, so the answer to that question about delaying, we're at the end of May, we're going, this has to be decided probably in the next I mean, they're close, right? They're very close, yeah. Um, of course, it goes to conference committee. You just never know, you know, what the negotiations are there. But at the end of the day, it, it does end at the end of June. Correct, June 30th. Um, is there anything um, urgent? I mean, what if, uh, I know you don't want to wait, but I mean, does it make a difference as far as the approval goes one way or the other? It does. I mean, we're not, um, we we're not a... a you know, we're an organization, what we do happens year round, and that's not, you know, we don't anticipate that stopping. Or, um, because we're such a small, you know, we've sort of budgeted when we expect those funds and we were anticipating that. So it it does make a very big difference into our. Uh, uh, Paul has stood up. I think he uh, wanted to and add no, something. Just very brief, not to steal the podium. Just a note as county staff, we actually are held to a quite rigid standard. So if this is not approved, we may be unable to assist with expenses ever that have, are being incurred right now. It's a, under the new system, there is an impact on, on approval dates. Trevor, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, to that point, I mean, the, this and our other ones with the Sports Commission and stuff like that is really general operating uh, support for that calendar year. Uh, so. I mean, I would just see if we were to hold hold this for at least for a couple of weeks that we would just revise the date. They would still get the full two hundred and ten thousand dollars. It would just be a separate. Well, uh, well they get the same amount. I, I think the point is that I think Paul's point is that it's if it's not there, it's not. Uh, I mean, it would still. Go, you have a calendar year budget, Ivan. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I. I mean, I'll. Um, I'll defer to uh, you know council's view on this. Um, I, I do feel like. 
we, we want to support the organization. I, I, I think the legislature's work, uh, it, it does, does seem to be going in a certain direction. Um, and again, I, I think we would, I would hope we would support the organization anyway. But uh, so, so uh, I was thinking of a contingency option, but uh, I would, my personal opinion is to move forward. But and again, I'll, I'll defer as uh, other members. Um, I'm presuming, and this is probably a question more to Matt than, than, than to Ivan, that uh, even if we presume a worst case scenario and, and, uh, and the legislature said no more money for the, for the tax credit, I presume that we would still do film work in Cleveland, and and that uh, that we wouldn't we wouldn't reduce our support for the film commission down the road to zero. It, but it might be a lower number than than two hundred and ten thousand because there there might be less opportunity. Is there is that a fair statement? I think in the short term, probably not, Councilman. That, that would be my guess. Uh, maybe in the longer term, that would be the case. But I think for this year, I, in the longer I, yeah, term, yeah, but for this yeah. year, right. So, uh, so I'm thinking along the lines of that: if that we uh, go ahead and approve the uh, the item, but that if if we do get a worst case scenario, that we uh, We do a reassessment as to whether uh, whether two hundred and ten thousand dollars is going to be needed within a year's time frame, and if and if we decide that it isn't, well, maybe uh, maybe we extend the extend the end date on this down the road. And and uh, I think your point, Councilman, is to pick it up on the next. We've been supporting the organization annually, and that we can make an adjustment in the next. Next time we could, yeah. we could, or even you know, you're saying that that the two hundred and ten thousand dollars might be needed still within the current year. But if we find that it's not, well, then uh, then we do a no cost extension and and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and 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 spread this out a little bit. But uh, but I don't. I don't know that we need to uh, delay the approval at this point. May I ask just one? Yes. Uh, Ivan, is your interest in the Greater Cleveland Film Commission the same if the worst case scenario happened? Would you still be uh, as passionate with the commission if uh, you found that that is maybe primarily the only place? Well, I think the Film Commission's has very stated vision and goals, and I don't see those changing um, okay. uh, with that. Um, you know, we started out with nothing. Right. And, um, you know, when, when we first, you know, 2009, and we advocated and advocated and advocated and worked really hard to get 10 to 20 to 40 million, and now we're trying to raise it to 100. Right. Um, uh, so as an organization, you know, I think the mission is well stated and the vision is well stated. How long have you been there, Ivan? I've been here 12 years, a little over, almost 13 years. Any other uh, questions or comments? Anyone before we, Trevor? Mr. Chair, just one comment. I, mean, I think Cuyahoga County has, you know, clearly shown a history of being supportive of the subsidy to uh, the Greater Cleveland Film Commission. I mean, we've been doing this uh, prior to even, I believe, the new government took place. I, I mean, I... I don't necessarily see the harm in holding off for a couple of weeks just to get a better understanding. And I don't even think it's going to change the, the dollar amount that we would provide. Um, but uh, I think to Councilwoman Baker's uh, points, I, I think it would be do, us doing our due diligence to see what happens with the state budget. I mean, we, we do hold off sometimes on a lot of different decisions waiting to see what happens with the state budget. Thinking about it, I, I feel like we should show our support for the organization. We can move forward. I, I think people, the group can decide, though, as they see fit uh, through vote. So, um, what? because what, what you would be proposing is two weeks, or what would you say? I'm presuming that that within two weeks that we'll know what the senators do. Yeah. Right. 
And at that point, I mean, if the Senate uh, comes in at the current level, it would it would be hard to imagine that the conference committee would end up with zero. It would seem like the worst case would probably be somewhere in the middle. Is that it? Is that it? So, so we should know. We should know more in a couple of weeks. So, Councilman, you're comfortable with a delay as well? Uh, I'm I'm comfortable with it, you know, but I'm I'm ready to vote for it. <laughs> you, you know, I, I know. but I but I'm but I hear my colleagues saying, I mean, two weeks. I mean, I'm. I, I wouldn't be comfortable waiting till June thirtieth, you know. But uh, but but I could live with two weeks. That might be a compromise in the middle, and we'd find out what the Senate what right. the Senate's well, done. I, I'm comfortable with open discussion and maybe a vote where people you know state their position, and then we we end up in a certain place. So, I, to start with, I'm going to make a motion to approve this item today, uh, the the amount, um, and uh, see if there's a second. We have a motion and second. There's no further discussion. All those, I'm going to ask people to raise their hands. All those in favor of approving that motion, please say aye. Aye, aye. and raise your hand. I would like to take a vote individually if I oh, can. Okay, go ahead. Andrew. Yeah. Nan Baker. I'm really torn. Um, I believe in what you're doing and what, what the state has profited. Um, I also think we need to do our due diligence, and I don't think two weeks is going to make a difference. Um, for our constituents, it looks that we are doing what we need to do to make sure that we understand completely what's going on on the state level. So I'm going to vote no, but I certainly uh, will be back to vote yes. Dale Miller? Yes. Trevor McAleer? I, I agree with Councilwoman Baker. I, I just, I'm not quite sure why we can't wait two weeks. So uh, I'll, I'll vote no. Yes. Matt Carroll? Yes. Lenora Lockett? Yes. Okay. Passes. Passes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, being you here. for very much. Thank you. I appreciate the discussion. I, I hear, uh, I hear both sides. Next item, item number, it's a new item, item BC 2019-373, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 45258 and enter into a contract with Specialized Construction Co. in the amount not to exceed $241,888.75, and it's for the 2019 Countywide Preventative Maintenance Program, Crack Sealing and Striping. Uh, Mike Chambers of Public Works, this was a formal uh, RFB closed August, uh, April 30th. There was four bid packages taken out, two were received, and we, we awarded to the lowest and best, which was uh, uh, diversity, uh, and so we're asking for your approval. I know there was some uh, questions about the split. Uh, uh, Nicole sent out an email before, and you know, approximately uh, 250,000 of the 2.5 million we have in that pot is being spent. These are projects that the county did in the last two to five years. And we're trying to keep our investment and then uh, crack seal them now before any damage is done. It's a new program that we're starting, and we're hopefully going to continue this in the future. Any questions? Yes, Councilwoman. So I'm, I'm just reading this this morning, so I'm trying to read what, what was given to us. The, the preventative maintenance program, and I haven't read what you've given us here yet, but is that a preventative maintenance program? program giving credit to those cities that have a preventative maintenance program or is this for cities that don't have one and we're trying to create one um, what it is is we set aside approximately 2.5 million dollars and all the cities are able to apply and you know go through and crack seal their roads uh, you know so far uh, currently we have 42 municipalities that applied and every one of them was awarded some monies the list you have right now are county projects that county did uh, over the last couple years that uh, in the past we would just turn over to the cities and rely on them to go ahead and crack, seal, and maintain, and that's not always the point. So we're trying to extend the life of these roads, so we decided we're going to invest in them 
to extend, you know, uh, crack seal these roads because we did them. We want to see them last a lot longer than uh, if we turn them over to cities and nothing's done. Because some cities have the wherewithal to do, you know, put some money in and some don't. And we feel countywide this is the best way to spend, you know, $200,000 to seal these roads and hopefully extend them for, you know, several more years. But all the other 42 communities that we talked about have applied and have received money as well uh, for other roads, not specifically the ones we identified. So, if I may, please, please. I understand the, the, the 42 that have applied mm -hmm. and have received, do we have that list? Do we know who they are? We do have that list. I don't have it with me, but it, the list that we sent to you were the list of the projects that the county did. Right. Uh, so the 42 that the communities, obviously, that's a list as well, and, you know, it varies in dollar amounts. But we certainly can get that for you. But everyone who applied did receive something. They, they were, you know, whatever they applied, they, they said how much money they need, and we responded and accepted, you know, all of, all of their uh, requests. And that $2.5 is the pot of money that we have assigned for preventative maintenance. All right. The, the catch-22 that my district has is that they have a pre most of them have a preventative maintenance program. They spend their own city funds to take care of their own roads. And then when it comes time to get their roads improved, they're, they're listed lower on the list because they have a preventative maintenance program that makes their roads look better. But under all that preventative maintenance are crumbling roads. And I just, I guess I'm just asking, that's why I'm interested in the 42 municipalities, if they were part of this program or? Oh, absolutely. I mean, how does that work in the, in the overall picture of who gets what money when uh, it's determined? On an annual basis, like I said, we take the capital of $15 million we allocated and we, we set aside, you know, obviously money for federal projects, uh, issue one projects. And then we also decided to set aside money for what we call the preventative maintenance. So uh, of the 42 communities, and I will get you the list, okay. um, on the county roads, it have to be a county road, they can't be municipal roads, but a county road. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, Rocky River and some of the other ones have applied, but I'll get you that list and okay. we'll reimburse them for the material and the cost associated with that, okay. up to, I believe it's $250,000. 250. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't mean to say that this isn't a good program. It is a good program. Sure. It's dollars, and it seems that the preventative maintenance, which we encourage, sometimes backfires because the roads look better than when they, what they really are when it comes to the big dollars that is needed to, uh, to re resurface or completely redo a road. And I agree with you, and I think what Nicole realized over the years was when we do, when we invest millions of dollars in a project, we turn it back over to the cities and nothing's done, yeah. and they start crumbling prematurely, now we're trying to, you know, it's best for the entire county. Um, I know you see a lot of Cleveland down there, Olmsted Township is actually the county roads ourselves, but we'll get you that list so you can see. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Yes, sir. Councilman. These communities that are listed in this list that we have in front of us, are these communities that are not participating, not among the 42 that are? No, no, they're, they're also participating among the 42 else, you know, uh, and we wanted to make sure we extend the life. So I'm sure Cleveland, I'm sure a lot of these have. I don't have the list in front of me of the 42, but I guarantee you that, you know, a lot of these cities have applied for some as well. So how do we decide what roads to do under this program and what roads to do under the program where we're cooperating with the municipalities. We do have, you know, it goes back to our initial capital plan. Maybe it'd be an opportunity to sit down and go over how we break up the pots of money, but some communities can apply and, you know, some have money they'd like to do. They only need a small portion of county money to get a job done. We have an 80-20 program. We have the federal aid, which takes a long time. But these particular lists here were roads that the county did and we went and spent millions of dollars on in the last two to five years. And we just wanted to see if our investment would last longer. It's the first time we've done this. I would imagine we're going to continue to do this every year. So we'll look at the last couple of years of projects and, and set aside money to crack seal them. But the rest of those, it's open to everybody else. 2.5 million is basically open to all the communities to apply. And quite a few of 42 have applied. Uh, I'll get you the list. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. May I ask, is there uh, any restrictions to applying? No. 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 So we'll no. pay for the material, and you just identify the road and the approximate dollar amount. And that's a full 250000 Up to. Up, up to. to. Yeah. Okay. Not everybody uses two fifty. That's. I mean, if everyone did it, we, okay. we'd need a lot more money, obviously. Yeah. 
Any further questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. This motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We are on to uh, next ne item. Next item, item number BC 2019-374, Department of Development, recommending an award and enter into an agreement with the City of Cleveland Heights in the amount not to exceed $399,000 for demolition of vacant, abandoned, nuisance, or blighted structures in connection with the Round 8 of the Cuyahoga County Property Demolition Program through December 31st, 2020. Ken Sarah from Department of Development, Graham, the city of Cleveland Heights, applied in, in round eight. Um, and uh, we would like to um, award them. This is for 31 um, residential properties uh, throughout the city. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so just a little background, because I know there's a question about dollars left and such, so I'll try and address that now. Um, so uh, through... Um, round eight um, we have committed um, just about uh, third I'm oh, sorry I just want to make sure my math is right um, about 42 um, million of the of the 50 million um, that said um, we did receive applications for round nine already in about of uh, an amount of just under 7.3 million dollars. <clears throat> but what we're also doing is in the process of decertifying uh, unused funds, which is about 3.2 million. So overall, and I'll save you the math, um, once we approve round nine and continue and complete the certifications, we'll have about 3.1 million um, left over. So you'll see the round nines hopefully coming in the next few weeks. All right, any questions? Yes. Sure, Councilman. Uh, when you say that after round nine you would have three million dollars left, is it not including? I think there's eight million that hasn't been appropriated yet out of the fifty million dollar goal, or or are we now into that final eight million? That will now start being happening. I believe there's an item that will be on the next fiscal agenda to appropriate some of that funding but there is still the eight million that hasn't been appropriated yet is that correct I, I believe this um, uh, the next fiscal item will be the first time that that is uh, starting to be asked for Ken to that point uh, the 7.3 coming in is on top of the 42 though uh, Yes. So the money has be. to be moved, but that, that is getting us to the end of the Correct. number. Yeah. Correct. Any other? Yes, Councilwoman. I see that these are all residential, and they're all in Cleveland Heights. Correct. Um, is, is there a reason why it's all in one city? Th this is for the city of Cleveland Heights only. Correct. Okay. So this, that, this. that whole round is Cleveland Heights. Correct. So... Um, <clears throat> You'll, you'll see different things. Certain cities will do all the demolitions on their own. Cleveland Heights is one of them that chooses, has the ability to do it. <clears throat> when I do a, a, a land bank contract, you might see multiple multiple right. cities. Right. But, um, you know, and the, and the ones that are coming up, I believe Cleveland, Shaker, uh, and Euclid will be doing them all themselves, too. And then you'll see a, a larger contract with the land bank with the rest of the cities. And if I may, and the residential structures that are chosen, is that a collaborative effort between the city then and the housing? so so uh, the way it works is the cities um, designate the properties um, that they they see is through their building typical building and inspection code violations etc right. um, we do vet the list um, just to make sure that um, there's there's um, that they're reasonable um, right. you know we ask to provide information you know strategic intent they do try and cluster um, certain areas um, I believe a lot of these are um, probably in the Noble and Caledonia neighborhoods which are probably the harder hit um, areas of Cleveland Heights to that point there, there are four or five pairs on here that look like they're ne maybe next to each other and that's economy of scale that's quicker and easier right correct, correct. they try to to group them um, it saves on uh, on the cost if you can have a crew uh, just kind of go through one street or nearby yes councilman question when is the current projection as 
to when the entire 50 million that was originally undertaken, when that money would be totally used up? That is a great question, Councilman. Um, <clears throat> so what we're doing now um, is having all contracts go through December 31st, 2020, and having that be the kind of the end date. Um, that said, even you know, if we enter into um, a round 10 contract, we'll leave that date as well. Um, there could be some of the current um, contracts that projects may not happen. There are a couple larger commercial um, <clears throat> demolitions that were applied for that um, in, in previous rounds that are still have open contracts. Um, so I, I, I actually feel that there probably will be a little bit of money left over um, even at the end of December 31st, 2020. And I think at that point, you know, we'll we'll look at the, the the overall project and see what's the best use of the remaining funds. Understood. That's helpful. Thank you. So no further questions. I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Ken. The next item is a two-part item, item BC 2019-375, Department of Development, A, submitting an RP exemption on requisition 45331, which will result in a payment to Downtown Cleveland Alliance for membership fees and operational support of clean and safe marketing and economic development initiatives. And it's for the period June 4th. 2019 through June 3rd, 2020, and B, recommending the payment in connection with said RFP exemption. Ken is back. Ken Sarf from Department of Development. I'm trying to get someone down here to make sure that we do this item. Hang on one sec. Do you want to skip to the next one, uh, Andrea? Can we do that, and I'll make yeah. sure someone yeah. comes back down. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So we'll skip 375 for the moment. Go yes. Ahead. Next item, BC 2019-376, with City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County Workforce Development Board, submitting an amendment to a contract with Towards Employment, Inc. for job seeker services for applicants with felony backgrounds. And it's for the period July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2019, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $70,000. Workforce readiness services and job placement services for individuals in the county jail in Bedford. The goal is to serve an additional 50 individuals while they're in jail, and post release, approximately 17 should be released, and the hope would be 13 of them find employment and we are using our federal WIOA allocation. Questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? So motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Next item is a two-part item, item BC 2019-377, Fiscal Office, A, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 45473, which will result in an award recommendation to Audiovisual Services Group, LLC, doing business as PSAV in the amount not to exceed $11,329.41, for the provision of audiovisual equipment to be used at the Cuyahoga County forfeited land sale, and it's for the period August 13th, 2019 through August 16th, 2019, and B, recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Any questions? Yes, sir. Trevor. Lisa, are we getting the convention center space for free? Yes. Thank you. All right. If there are no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.
Next item, be seeing an award on requisition 45421 to the United States Postal Service in the amount of $147,240 and is for the purchase of postage for mailing of escrow coupons, letters, and second half 2018 tax bills in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 323.08. Hi, Sharnice Wilson, representing the Treasury Office. We're requesting payment to the United States Postal Service to pay for postage only for uh, mailing for our escrow coupons and letters in the second half tax bills. Um, the escrow coupons and everything goes out um, in about two weeks and it'll allow the taxpayers to prepay their taxes um, with the escrow coupons and letters. Um, and so, yes, again, that's just for postage only. So, uh, and it's pay, pay directly to the United States Postal Service. Any questions? Yes, sir. Councilman. So, since the U.S. Postal Service is the only supplier, is this considered a sole source? Nora Lockett, well, Office of Procurement and Diversity. For county standards, it's not a sole source. It's a government purchase. But there is an, a specific provision in the code about it, right? That's yes, I see in the question, the answer, yeah. Okay. We have the um, administrative list of procurement exemptions. Uh, so it's on the list, okay. Correct. Fine. All right. Yes, sir. Sure. Just to follow up to that question, uh, we usually don't see United States Postal Service awards. What? How do we treat all the other times that we use the post office? Like are there other purchases? Yeah, go ahead. Lenora Lockett, again, I believe in this case, we used to go through the actual provider, Midwest, which was the, and their contract included the postage amount, but we paid it through the consultant. In this case, we're doing it separate. The consultant is still preparing the tax bill, and we're paying directly to Postal Service for the postage for the tax bills when they're mailed. That's correct. So, so like just uh, either like dog license or other things that we do bulk mailing, how do we pay for that posting? Like it, UPS doesn't really come forward to the border. I, I didn't yeah. think it had to come to border control because of the approved ordinance from a while back or whatever it was that the blanket authorization to use the post office. And I'm going to. Physical does the dog licenses. I'm not positive on that. Right. To be with you, so. There was a, a, oh, I'm sorry. There was a recent. Um, opinion with the state auditor that required us now to get the postage encumbered. So maybe that's why you haven't okay. seen it. So that's what in the past it, we never had to bring it to council for the postage. And the exemption in the code is still requires it gets on the agenda. It's not a wouldn't be a consent. It could be a consent item maybe in the future or something like that. I don't know. Correct. Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. There's the administrative list the details, purchases that are, um, do not have to have a procurement um, process stated. You don't have to do an RFP, RFQ, or sole source for the items that were voted by this board to be on that list. In this case, that is the route that they're going for this large payment to the postal services. Now, every department has mail that they work through the Department of Public Works, so we do certified letters, we send out mailings, we don't get a bill, but I'm, I'm going to defer to my chambers, so I'm not sure how their division pays for the Postal Service. No, I, I do know that we do pay postage. I know Jim, when he does print jobs, he has to also get a check cut separately. And I do go back to, I think we just said, it was to encumber the money. Now, we may have sent down an encumbrance request down to Angie. I, I'm not sure in the past or it was under our thresholds, but I know the check has to go um, or else they won't do the job. Right, correct. Yeah, I mean, just looking at, like, the reappraisal. Mailing. I mean, just, just things like that. We're typically tons, but, tons of mails. Yeah. yeah. So they need to so, so maybe we can review where this belongs on the agenda. You know, in the future. So, any any further questions? Move approval. All right. Second. There's motion and second uh, to approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Next item, BC 2019-379, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on requisition 45242 and enter into a contract with Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland in the amount not to exceed $22,031.32 for mentoring services and implementation of the Growing Smart Leaders Preventing Delinquency and Truancy in Mount Pleasant Program for at-risk youth in connection with the fiscal year 2019 Title II Formula Juvenile Justice Delinquency and Prevention Act Block Grant Program. And it's for the period June 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019. Good morning, Mary Beth Vaughn from Public Safety. And you may recall that the purpose of this grant is to decrease the over-representation of minority youth in the juvenile justice system. This program and this award to the Boys and Girls Club will actually result in 15 students at John Adams High School participating in the program. And it's a mentoring program that has four components. It'll have structured group discussions, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, exposure trips, and then they do what they call youth voice sessions, where they invite the kids to come in and actually give input on the program and to teach them how to apply the skills that they're learning. And this, this is a portion of a larger grant, I guess, from... That is correct. Um, the larger grant is $110,000. What happened is we did the first round of funding back in the fall. And at that time, not all of the programs merited funding. So we issued a supplemental notice of funding opportunity. And this is resulting from there. The supplemental, we received five applications. And this was the one that was deemed to be the most uh, viable. Other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item, and, um, Hold on a second. Ken, do you want to uh, come back and? Oh, oh, Paul is ready. Okay. So if, if we may, let's go back to 375, if that's okay. Back to item BC 2019-375, it's a two-part item. Again, Department of Development A, submitting an RP exemption on requisition 45331, which will result in a payment to Downtown Cleveland Alliance for membership fees and operational support of clean and safe marketing and economic development initiatives for the period June 4th, 2019 through June 3rd, 2020, and B, recommending the payment in connection with said RP exemption. So Paul Hurtig with the Department of Development does actually two ways in which Cuyahoga County is supporting Downtown Cleveland Alliance. The first is as a member of the Special Improvement District for Downtown Cleveland. This is the district that provides the additional uh, services, the yellow and blue uh, jacket and insured people you see downtown doing cleaning and safety ambassadors. But we additionally um, provide operating support directly to Downtown Cleveland Alliance to support its operations. So we are doing this in two ways, and I, I would simply say on behalf of Ted that we've found DCA to be a terrific voice for downtown. It does economic development functions as well as the maintenance functions, and it's, it's absolutely essential to continue this support. Questions? Yes, go ahead, Chair. Paul, uh, just a quick question. Have, we've al have we always done both support? Um, the answer is not always. It's relatively recent, the past few years, that we've increased above the SID payment to the additional operating support. And that was basically based on Ted's analysis and meeting with Joe Marinucci that he felt there's additional work to be done beyond the maintenance work. So between the two, how much is it? That's my understanding is 100000 for the SID and 30000 for the operating. And Paul, that the 100000 generally is based on uh, our presence downtown, is that right? Or? It, to some extent, although as a government unit, we would not legally have to pay, but it's, right. it's, we've calculated that as our fair share as, as if we were a business. Other questions? Councilman. Just a comment that the uh, Department of Development has a lot of irons in the fire, and I think there's benefit for having this, this partnership to do some of this kind of work that uh, might otherwise fall in, into government responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. If there are no further questions or comments, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. So motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Back to our agenda, Andrea. 
Next item is BC 2019-380, Department of Law, submitting an amendment to a contract with Matrix Point Software, LLC, for maintenance, support, and data hosting services on the Matrix Civil Electronic Document and Records Management System. And it's for the period March 1st, 2014, through February 28th, 2019. So, I mean, we did start the process before it ended, and we needed. And I know we're... If I may, I know we're talking five years from now, but I mean, is there lessons learned? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then my follow-up question to this, um, there's no um, no other choice in, in uh, who we choose to continue this. And I mean, it's five years and we're extending a five year to another five years. I believe it's for five more years without any... Um, look at what else is out there to continue this service, even though it may come back to Matrix, but at least give it a look? Um, we could look into doing that. Um, Matrix built, custom built this system for us. So, you know, in terms of what it would require to, you know, for another vendor to step in, learn the system, be able to migrate the data and to support the system, um, I don't know what that cost would be. Um, Matrix agreed to continue this contract on the same cost as the original agreement, and we're happy with the services they're providing, but we could certainly look into whether another vendor could take over right. and, and manage the software for us. If I may, is there any concern on your part that if something were to have forced to look at other vendors that we hadn't in the past, and that would have to be something that we would do for the first time? Um, I'm not sure, honestly. Um, there were other, there were two other vendors we looked at when we first went, you know, put the system out for bid. Um, we could potentially go back to them and see if there's something. I mean, we may have to somehow uh, revise the system in order to, um, if that circumstance did arise. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Okay. To that point, the, the agreement that is ending or ended, uh, it didn't contemplate any additional terms. It, it just it didn't have a you know renewal. Uh, Did not. No. Yeah. If I um, may, too, given that is there, um, this ended back in February, twenty eight nineteen. Has there been any? Um, how did we pay for their services from then until now, that we're into the end of May? Um, we do have uh, some money left over under the, the previous contract that will be able to cover um, the services up through. Um, uh, now, but okay. because it's an amendment, we would like it to have a date so that it's, there's some continuity of March 1st. Right. Okay. Other, any other uh, questions? Yes, yes Councilman. Is there any relationship between this contract and the ERP system? No. It, no. it operates independently of ERP. And uh, was the original... Four-year contract for one hundred and seventy-two thousand two hundred dollars. Um, there are actually four contracts. They were all bundled under one contract mm -hmm. number. So there was a software license agreement was one dollar. Um, the maintenance and ho so the the total here would be the for the maintenance and host the the data hosting contract and then the maintenance and support would be a total of one seventy-two. And uh, so since we had some dollars left over from the initial contract and we're going to be able to go the first uh, uh, three months or so under the old money, do you anticipate we're going to need the full $172,200 or, or, or might it be a lower number? Um. It may be lower, but I'm not sure at this time. You you can report back on that, Lisa? Yes. To the board. Any uh, further questions or discussion? Um, I understand the points. I think points well taken. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? <laughs> All right. 
Motion and second. Uh, all those in favor approve the item, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Next item, BC 2019-381, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an agreement with the Cuyahoga County Department of Workforce Development in the amount not to exceed 400 cents for job readiness and training for recipients of temporary assistance for needy families and food assistance employment 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Good morning. This is our interagency agreement that we have with the Department of Workforce Development. We are a mandated partner in, with the One Stop. Current agreement ends on June 30th, and this will be our new one will be getting Jan, you know, July 1st. Budget demand the contract of the dollars. Um, we support three staff that uh, staff our resource centers at uh, Quincy Place and Old Brooklyn. And then the third portion of the contract is money we set aside for individual training accounts for individuals that want to come in that are, you know, TANF recipients that are interested in obtaining some skill training. Um, workforce development will identify the potential training program, and then we'll, you know, they will invoice us for the cost of the training. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to move to approve this item. Is there a second? Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-382, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an amendment to a contract with Early Childhood Options of University Circle for child care drop-in services, and it's for the period July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019, to extend the time period to June 30th, 2020, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $210,421.85. Bob Math again on behalf of the Job and Family Services. Um, this is to operate with, as a contract with an amendment with early childhood options to continue providing to impl operate our child care drop-in center at the Virgil Brown building. Um, this was competitively procured last year, so this is the first amendment to that contract. Um, the drop-in center affords families and parents that come into Virgil Brown to meet with their caseworkers an opportunity to, you know, have their child be placed, you know, to to, to stay in a drop-in in the drop-in center while they're being interviewed by their by the caseworker to avoid kind of distractions, you know, for the parent. Bob, is that the name of the entity, Early Childhood Options? Is that is that just a nonprofit or? It's a nonprofit, yes, and that's the name of the organization. Early Childhood Options of University Circle, right? Okay. All right. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-383, Sheriff's Department, recommending an award on requisition 44354 to Vance Outdoors, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $100,000 for the purchase of 116 Safari Land Armor Ballistic Level Body Armor and Carriers for deputies, and it's for the period May 20th, 2019 through December 31st, 2019. Good morning, Tanisha Will, on behalf of the Sheriff's Department. This item was um, competitively, competitively bid, and we did go with the lowest and best bidder. Um, this would be for new and replacement vest for our sheriff deputies. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item, BC 2019-384, again, Sheriff's Department, recommending an award on requisition 44817 and enter into a contract with Western Reserve Psychological Associates, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $24,999.99 for psychological evaluation services for new hire sheriff deputy candidates. It's for the period May 20th, 2019 through December 31st, 2019. Sure on behalf of the Sheriff's Department. This also, this item was also competitively bid, and we also went with the lowest and best bidder for um, new hires to come on to the Sheriff's Deputies staff. Okay, any questions? Yes, Trevor. How many uh, deputies would this cover for the? This will cover 41. 41? Mm -hmm. Yes, Councilman. How many, uh, how many bids were received on this? I believe six, 
five or six. Five or six. And there were two that came in at the lowest at 600, but we went with this one because they offered more um, evaluation services than the other. Other questions? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we are on to the consent agenda. There are a few items. We'll still. Consent agenda items numbers BC 2019 385 through 387. Okay. Any questions, comments? All right, hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda items, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. As for other business, I believe we have one mission critical item. Andrea, is that right? Yes, we do. It is the Department of Public Works recommending an award on requisition 45690 in the amount not to exceed $17,215.56 to Advanced Door Co. Uh, for various county buildings, they are repairing the door and gate. And the funding source being utilized is Internal Service Fund slash General Fund. Uh, good, <clears throat> excuse me. Good morning, Tom Pavich, Department of Public Works. Um, looking for approval of a mission critical that we authorize to our uh, trade staff. It's with uh, Advanced Door. The dollar amount seventeen thousand two fifteen fifty six. Um, this is for various county buildings. We had multiple buildings. We had to get uh, some doors and gates fixed. Um, there was various buildings, um, including the Justice Center. Um, you know, the dollar amount's high, and I think there was a question when we uh, presented the new contract some time ago. Um, you know, some of these doors, um, I talked to our uh, head trades uh, superintendent, uh, facility superintendent this morning to get his expertise on these. Um, some of these doors with the uh, actual operator, you know, they do run 20, uh, 20 to $25,000. If there's a controller involved, those can run thirty to 35000 So um, anytime we do repair some of these doors, um, you're, you're going to see an increase in price. Um, and a lot of these doors do have high volume, such as Justice Center, which was one of the buildings included in this repair. Um, some of the components, such as the operator, they're um, a high traffic operator. They're, they're running about 300,000 revolutions, meaning it's up to 300,000 ups and downs. Um, you know, the Justice Center alone has 300 parking spots. so. You know, if they come in and out daily, it's 600, not including maintenance staff going in and out, vendors going in and out possibly. Um, you know, so eventually this equipment does go in some of these buildings. So we had issues uh, this mission critical. Okay, any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Well, let's uh, first, if we could, uh, like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include this item. Is there a second? Motion and second. All those in favor of amending the agenda to include this item, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Councilman. Sorry. So my question is, most of the mission criticals we get are responding to uh, a single unanticipated incident. Correct. Uh, uh, a repair, a, a child needing special treatment, uh, uh, equipment that breaks down in the medical examiner's lab and so on and so forth. But this uh, this appears to be uh, a more general kind of item that uh, included the repair of uh, a number of items at, at the same time where problems have developed. And, and I, I'm just wondering why this would be done as a mission critical. Why can't this just be done as a standard bid? Um. All of our buildings are secure buildings. So when we have a um, door that goes down to a dock at the Justice Center, we can't have the public have access to those doors. That's why they go up and down as soon as a car goes in and out. Um, one of the locations was our 1642 where they have a locking gate that goes across. That had to be uh, repaired the same day because we've got all of our trade staff, they have their vehicles, including their vans, that could have up to $10,000 worth of tools and equipment. Um, we can't have a security guard 
stationed right there in the parking lot 24 hours while a gate gets fixed. Um, yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Matt Reimer, Department of Public Works. Uh, Councilman, to your question, I think what Tom has attempted to do here, we had four specific instances that we are consolidating into one mission critical, four instances of mission critical repairs that were needed. Uh, this was, I think we explained this a couple weeks ago. Um, if you may recall, we do have a contract with Advance Door that began in April. Uh, they had original contract closed in October. There was a problem with the award. We had to go back out for bid. These mission criticals, which would have otherwise been picked up under our current contract, were during that gap period where we had to rebid uh, the contract and we had to perform certain things on mission critical service. And if I can add to the last time we bid, this was the only bidder that came out because of the complexity of the, the, the doors and stuff, and they were the one that won the contract again. So we went with them because they were the one that responded to us. Yes, so, so they're the incumbent, the previous contractor, when we did bid this the first time, the only bidder, and the, their current contractor, they're the current bidder. And uh, is the price that we got on the mission critical work uh, essentially the same as, as we would have gotten under the contract? Yes. Or did we have to pay more because no. of, no? No, they honor the same price. Okay. I may ask. Yes, Councilman. So this is not um, a generic, we need to check our doors. No, no. This no, is four no. specific doors no. that you're lumping yes. together because all four of them are in need of. Uh, That's correct. These, these were actual repairs. Our PM was part of the contract. We did not do PMs until a contract was approved. Um, you know, the actual lubrication, the preventive maintenance, these were repairs that uh, we couldn't wait. We had to get those repaired the same day. I had the same concern as Councilman Miller as to the broadness. It yep. sounded... I was going to go in that direction. I was kind of giving you a slow ramp up to the full, so... <laughs> so, so did these I doors, could write a book. Did these doors just totally fail so, so that the people were waiting until we got somebody there... And, and they were unoperable, or, or did we? A little bit they were that. inoperable. So, like, so they were inoperable. So, at 1642, the controller blew on the gate. The controller on a gate actually controls mm -hmm. the mechanism. That actually blew. So, we had to get that the entire component fixed mm -hmm. and replaced. So, does that mean that vehicles couldn't get in and out for? I believe that was, I believe it was stuck in the open position on, at 1642. If it was stuck in the lock position, yes, there would have been the challenge that day and that mm -hmm. night. We probably would have sent them over to another building and we were able to lock them up. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Trevor. Yeah. I just have a question on timing. If yep. these repairs happened before April, just yep. why, why is it now take now to get them? We, were just, we just got the invoices. These happened during the first quarter. Um, we just got the invoices. The one at 1642, the vendor had to go back and do a touch-up, you know, with uh, one of the other small components just to make sure it's fully operable. So, Anything else? Any uh, Anyone? Hearing uh, no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of the item, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, any other business? Andrea. Uh, no other business at this time. I would just like to comment that uh, county offices will be closed on Monday, May 27th in observance of the Memorial Day holiday, and the next scheduled meeting of the Board of Control will take place on Tuesday, May 29th. All right. Any public comment before we go? No None? public comment. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. And I will second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.